Yeah, so I've just been looking at some uh, data from uh, Pfizer on the, the African uh, variant. And it seems consistent that this African variant, the B1351, uh, with the E484K mutation, is really showing a decreased vaccine efficacy across the board uh, with these different um, vaccines, Moderna, Pfizer, and AstraZeneca. Mm. I think the South African variant uh, is more of a concern in this context for South Africa, because a lot more of the people are being infected by this South African variant compared to the UK. So any drop in vaccine efficacy, even though it's minor, uh, may affect a lot more people in South Africa than in the UK. So I think the South African authorities are being wise to be cautious about rolling out this vaccine uh, too widely at the moment. Right. Now, Doctor, the study on which this decision was based included about 2,000 volunteers who on average were about 31 years old. It's pretty young, whereas we know most nations have been inoculating seniors. Would age have a bearing in this? Yeah, well, the immune responses are generally better for the younger population. We know that as people get older, the, uh, immunosenescence kicks in, which means that they, their immune, immune responses are much more slow and may not reach the same peak levels as the younger population. So if you are seeing this type of reduced efficacy in the younger population, uh, you, it may be even uh, worse in the older population who have an aging immune system. So I think there is a reason for a degree of caution here. And we should stress again that it's just one type of vaccine offering reduced protection against the coronavirus variant in South Africa. But do you think this has any impact on the vaccine rollout elsewhere? Because we've already seen, as you say, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson coming out to defend its use in the UK. Yeah, so we need to be very clear here that the, the vaccine probably still re reduces uh, severe disease and death significantly. And that's what the, um, the British Prime Minister is saying. And I, I don't disagree with that. But if you think about the South African situation, if you have a reduction in uh, protection against even mild and moderate disease that may increase the hospitalization rate in that country, and there are a lot more people infected with this South African variant in that country, that may uh, risk overwhelming those frontline healthcare services uh, because that South African variant is so more widespread. So I hope that makes sense because uh, the context is right. different between the UK and Europe and South Africa uh, because of this. Of course. But then just the very uh, presence of all these new strains of the virus seem to really rattle public confidence in vaccines as a whole. People I'm hearing increasingly saying they'd rather wait. Is that a good idea? No, I think people should get vaccinated because these vaccines, uh, although the, the virus may drift and, and uh, a bit of, again, uh, away from that specific, that specific immune response induced by the vaccine, the, there may be some cross-reacting antibody T-cell responses induced by the vaccine that can still protect them to some extent, uh, even if the virus changes a little bit. So we know that these type of cross-reacting antibody T-cell responses do exist for other viruses, including for flu. And it, so I think it's still important for people to get the vaccine, uh, at least get the first dose and hopefully the second dose, to uh, make that broader immune response more robust and therefore protected against severe disease and death. Right. Now, Doctor, you know, globally, we are seem to be seeing that the Northern Hemisphere winter spike is easing a little. Uh, are we finally turning the corner, or is it too premature to say? Well, there are multiple uh, reasons that might feed into this. I mean, certainly we get a winter spike for respiratory viruses anyway, regardless of COVID. And interestingly, this season, we've not seen much flu or much RSV, not much of the other re uh, seasonal respiratory viruses, uh, except for perhaps rhinovirus that we've seen quite a lot of. Uh, but also the lockdowns in various countries, because we have seen a global surge of cases, may well be having an effect now. Plus, also, in the countries where the vaccine is rolling out, we, we may well see, like Israel, a kind of acceleration of that reduction in the number of cases where those uh, vaccine programs have maybe immunized at least 50 percent of the population. So the UK is still some way away from that, uh, as are the EU. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how those case numbers fall uh, with those vaccine rolled out, rollouts. But of course, the lockdown will also have an impact on that as well. So trying to separate the two might be tricky. Right. Well,